Hello everybody. Uh, well, tonight's project uh, is going to be an incubator. Uh, my roommates uh, ordered some eggs and he's getting more eggs than he expected. His digital incubator only fits three eggs. So he's getting some extras, so I thought I'd build a uh, incubator, a fully automatic, hopefully fully automatic incubator. Um, and uh, we'll see if they end up hatching and you guys can kind of follow along and maybe use some of these tips that I'm going to give you to build your own incubator. Um, I'm just going to show you what I started with here. I got this big plastic container. You could use any any type of container really for this build. Plastic's better because I'm going to be drilling holes in the sides. Um, we have a digital temperature and humidity gauge. Small little fan that I already had. Um, just a uh, clear light bulb, 60 watts so far. Um, just with a normal normal cord on it and a pressure clamp. Um, we have a timer here. We're going to bring that into play. Some white duct tape because we're going to try to make this thing look good. But you could use normal duct tape. But um, The most important thing I got was this um, low end um, water heater thermostat and we're gonna try to balance we're gonna wire this into this cord and we'll balance the temperature inside of it using that hopefully so we'll see how that works and uh, we're even gonna try to build a automatic turning system because you have to turn the eggs um, three to seven times a day so the embryos don't get stuck to the side of the egg and it exercises the embryos I'm thinking this motor in this uh, old can opener. It's going to be really strong and slow moving so we're going to try to use that motor to spin the eggs and I have some mesh for the bottom of the the um, the bin so uh, we'll just I'll just kind of take little snippets here as we go and we'll kind of follow along and uh, see how it ends up working. First step I just uh, bent the wire mesh so it fit in the bottom but was also raised off of the bottom at least an inch or half inch or so because I'm going to have my water my humidity source underneath this mesh and it's small enough that the chickens feet shouldn't um, get snagged up in it and they won't come in contact with the water because that won't be good so there you go first step alright done with the next step um, I attached my um, can opener to one of the dowels here. This this dowel right here is connected to the can opener and uh, this dowel is stationary. I glued it to both sides. This other one's just ran through the other side and uh, this one's a little slicker so the egg just kind of slips on it and uh, this one's a little more grippy because of the wood so uh, and I guess when I turn it on it's going to be kind of loud but you'll see that <laughs> I guess it's hard to see, but the egg is spinning pretty slowly. Now you might be able to see it. There we go. Oh, jeez. Hold on a second here. Yeah, uh, so. The eggs are going to spin just fine using this, um, and I'm just going to use my timer. Um, looks like I'll be able to set set the increments down to about 30 seconds, so it's going to probably spin uh, the eggs for about uh, 30 seconds each time I have it turn on. Um, Alright, finished up with the next step. Um, I have my heat source, which is this light bulb. And um, you can see I put a small piece of wood in here running the length of the container with a pressure clamp. I can slide this bulb back and forth um, closer or farther away from my thermostat. Um, that's going to have a lot to do with balancing out the temperature. Once I get it right, then you won't have to move it. Um, but all you have to do for this type of thermostat, from what I read and what I've heard, is just cut either one of the two cords, doesn't matter if it's the ground or the power on your um, actual light fixture cord and simply 
uh, strip the wire and connect them to the two screw connectors here and I have this sticking out here so I can uh, adjust the temperature here um, this is going to be a balancing act between where this is set and how far this light bulb is to this um, thermostat because it's gonna it's gonna feel the heat of the light bulb here and uh, we should be able to by sliding this closer or farther away plus adjusting this um, we should be able to get a we should be able to get this right at uh, between 95 degrees and 100 degrees or you know with one de one degree variance is what I'm hoping to get and um, I guess the next step is uh, looks like I just have to install the fan and uh, get the thermometer in there and uh, I'll get back to you all right I think I'm all done um, got the fan mounted uh, I got the switch on the outside of the box so I can control the speed have the uh, temperature and humidity gauge right next to the eggs where they will be that's just a test egg from the refrigerator um, everything looks good I just have to make some little slits here to uh, sink the cords in so the lid fits on right and uh, I should be able to turn this on and start balancing the temperature and if that's if that happens to be all good if I can get that temperature right around 95 to 100.5 um, we'll be ready for the eggs. Uh, we're getting them tomorrow and I just found out about it today. So this is a one day build. It took about three hours and only cost, uh, I spent about 40 bucks. But you might have a lot of this around your house. I already had the fan and I had the um, can opener. But the rest of the stuff I bought, um, the uh, thermostat, $10. You can get them for eight um, at some places hardware stores and this is a ten dollar digital uh, thermometer humidity gauge and of course just uh, seven bucks for this uh, light fixture and it's it's really pretty cheap um, for double the price you could just go and buy an incubator you know around eighty bucks you can get one um, but it's it's a lot funner to build them yourself and it's it's more rewarding uh, that's why I hatch eggs in the first place because it's rewarding and it's fun so uh, alright I'm gonna try to balance the temperature and I'll get back to you with uh, the results from that and uh, tomorrow we'll get the eggs in and uh, see if this thing ends up working alright well I wanted to point out a quick change I made a little modification um, my fan seemed a little too powerful for this setup like it was creating a little too much airflow so um, I actually took the blade off of the fan and uh, replace it with this um, prop from a RC plane or you can make one or you could just trim down the prop you know the actual fan blades themselves but you just kinda want a nice gentle airflow and uh, so I trimmed that down and now that that's working really well so and uh, I guess the cat's kinda helping me do something here no oh, maybe not uh, yeah so I haven't really uh, got to try to balance the temperature yet but that's what I'm gonna do now I think I'm I think I'm good to go so we'll get back to you alright everything's up and running uh, we had a successful build uh, the switch works the thermostat switch I tested that to make sure it would turn on and off at the right temperature um, I guess the only problem I have right now is my 60 watt bulb there is um, just not quite putting out enough heat that's no big deal um, 60 watt bulb can only get me to 82 degrees 76 percent humidity that's good uh, so I'm actually gonna go with a hundred watt bulb when I wake up tomorrow I'm gonna go get one of them and uh, should easily bring me up to 100 degrees and the uh, cutoff switch will turn off when I want it to I'm hoping and uh, haven't hooked the timer up to the uh, the can opener egg turner but that's uh, cheesecake easy so I mean if it turns on it turns on I mean it spins the eggs so everything went pretty good it was a really fun build uh, probably about three four hours with me dinking around and uh, about 40 bucks so 
Should be pretty cool. Should be pretty fun. I'll get back to you. All right. Um, it's the next day. Uh, I finished the incubator and the temperature's working just fine. The thermostat works. Uh, we did get the eggs in. We have three of them. My daughter just got home from school. We're, let's check them out. See what they look like. Is this the set? There we go. Let's check them out. Oh, cool. See, they're not even white. Ooh, they're little. Pretty awesome, huh? See, they're nice and cool. Okay, the light just turned off in here, so um, it's at 101 degrees right now, so I turned the temp down a tiny bit, but uh, it's holding a good temperature. You can set them in, set them in here, Katie. This which, is our jump. Which way, which way do you put it? Um, either way, just on it's just sideways, so. Will these be hot? Um, they're going to warm up. They're, they're cool right now. What, is that egg just a regular egg or something? This is just a regular chicken egg. Yeah, I mean, a, from the fridge. Oh. All right. Hey, I'm back. Um, my batteries died when I was here with my daughter getting the eggs in there. So what I was about to say was um, my can opener for my auto turn um, seized up and fried out. So right now, for now, I just have a, a little spin handle on here, which does a great job. Um, I might just end up hand spinning them, but I might get another can opener. It worked great. Um, it just spun a little bit too long with this type of uh, with this type of a timer. But I figured out a way around that. Um, let me get my macro. Um, if you have a timer like this, um, these little square sections. Yeah, this is when you push one down that's what triggers um, the on switch and you can actually take a razor blade see how this one's flat that's a normal one but this one here I cut down to a little point and you'll see what I mean when it goes to trigger the actual timer this thing's spinning super slow so I'll see it turns on right about there stays on stays on stays on stays on so that's about five minutes and then it clicks off and that's way too long but if you take a razor blade and cut that piece of plastic down, you can have it turn on right about here, stink, right off, right about 45 seconds or however long you want it to spin, you just cut it down more. So anyway, so that's uh, that's how you can turn a, a, a you know, $8 timer into a $30 timer uh, with a little bit of patience. Uh, one thing I wanted to quick say, my videos keep taking too long because I keep talking too much um, this uh, thermostat is working wonderful all I'd recommend doing is start with your bulb about uh, seven to eight inches away maybe I'd say seven inches away from the thermostat depends on the size of your container or size of your bulb but just start somewhere and um, once your whole container gets up to 100.5 degrees turn your thermostat um, down slowly until it clicks the light off and as soon as it does that turn it up back up just a teeny little smidge and then you're gonna be almost golden but if your fluctuation of your temperature ends up being too great like if it drops like three or four degrees before it kicks back on then all you have to do is move your light bulb closer to the thermostat because the residual heat from the light bulb will trigger the thermostat to turn on and off faster than the air temperature itself inside the container.